Welcome to the Sports Zone Overtime Podcast, where the final buzzer has sounded, but the action still continues. I think that's a bit different than I said it last week. I think I like last week's slogan better. I'm still trying to fine tune the slogan, but I think within a couple of weeks, I think we're going to have the actual slogan that I say, and we're going to make it become a little famous here on the Sports Zone Podcast. I mean, you could have fooled me, to be honest. Both sounded like music to my ears, so I think we're, uh, we're looking good. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, we just got done doing the Sports Zone, uh, this week's Sports Zone. I thought it was a, a pretty good show. We had a lot of jam-packed uh, content in there. Um, it started off with a recap of our game of the week. Now, I'm yeah. super, super sad I didn't get to see this game. Right. It was uh, number one Ishpeme, the number one team in Division Four, going up against number one Nagani, the number one team in Divisions 1 through 3. And Ishpeming being the only team to beat Nagani this year. Right. So this was a rematch. Yeah. Uh, Ishpeming beating Nagani earlier in the season. Uh, Ishpeming came into this one undefeated. Nagani, obviously, just with that one loss to Ishpeming. Um, and I thought this one could go either way. Um, I think yeah. I was leaning Ishpeming just because of how dominant they've been. Right. But you got to give it up to the Nagani Miners. I mean, this program just continues to find ways to win. Year after year, they get a bunch of just super talented players, and this year is no different. I said it a few weeks ago. I said, in order to beat the Hematites, you're going to need at least three players that can handle the basketball and right. do it consistently because of the way that Ishpeming likes to press and really try to create those turnovers, and that's where, where they're at their best is when they're scoring off of their defense. Um, and from all accounts, uh, at least the highlights I saw, they were able to do that. And, of course, you got Ella Mason. She... Came into there, and yeah. she went off. and that's 30-point game. 30-point game. Yeah. Um, she's done that a few times throughout her career, and she showed up big, and she was, she was the difference maker. Yeah. Uh, it was insane. It was a pretty good game, and it definitely lived up to the hype. For sure. Yeah, when she can get hot behind the three-point line, I think that's a, a dangerous combination. Um, but, yeah, like at some point I remember Coach O'Donnell saying uh, last year in their playoff game they only had like two or three people score. Mm -hmm. um, and so it seems like that's something they've really worked on. And obviously it's been super fruitful for them to be able to come back. And I think they won this one by like nine. Um, so yeah, that's obviously very impressive. Ishpeming having not lost to go in on their home turf and beat them, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I actually went to Ishpeming earlier this week. Uh, the Hematites were playing the Berga Vikings. It was another, another big game. Ishpeming actually ended up winning big in that game. But I did speak to a lot of people there at Ishpeming High School. And, Everyone was talking about Ella Mason and just how good she was, and, yeah. and that was a big reason why um, Nagani was able to pull that off. I mean, she has the respect of her opponents, obviously of her teammates as well. She's just a great player. Um, both these teams, I still think, are primed to make a deep run in the postseason, so um, it's going to be exciting to see just where these teams go and end up at the end of the season. So, 100%. Uh, we moved on. We did our player spotlight, and this week you took care of the player spotlight, and it was, as you can see, uh, featuring the Mackey twins, the Mackey yeah. sisters from Escanaba, Morgan, and Kiara Mackey. Um, talk about what you kind of learned just going out there and, and talking with them. Well, credit to them. We did four interviews for this story, and all four were great, which doesn't always happen, so i got to give a shout-out for that. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun to see. Um, obviously, their mom, they got the history with their mom being previously the leading scorer in women's basketball at Northern. Um, and that was just recently surpassed by McKaylee Kuhn, I believe. Yep. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. Um, and obviously the girls are seniors. Um, Escanaba's team last year uh, had a bunch more seniors and a lot of them have left. And so now I believe they only have three seniors mm -hmm. and two of them are the Mackey sisters. Um, so it was just cool to hear about their experience. Um, and they started off the season a little bit rough. I think one and five they were, and they battled back. Um, I believe at one point they went, had a nine and one stretch, and now they're at 10 and eight. I don't know how tonight's game against Ishpeming would go. Obviously that's a tough opponent as we've talked about, but yeah, it seems like they're getting primed to uh, potentially make a run, especially with uh, Kira and Morgan. This is really neat seeing how uh, basketball kind of runs in their family. You mentioned her mom yeah. playing at Northern. Uh, they have an older brother that was also a really good player for the Eskimos, and he's actually playing football up at Michigan Tech right yep. now. Um, and it's very interesting to see. Obviously, they're sisters, they're twins. You know, they share that special connection. I know Coach Hudson mentioned that on the court. They kind of know where each other is going to be. We hear yeah. it all the time. Twins have that twin like, special connection, yeah. connection uh, mental connection, and, and they definitely have that as well. But Kiera's obviously the the I don't want to say the better player but she has the most accolades she's the one um, right. that's 
really leading that team when you talk about scoring the basketball and, and just being that leader. Morgan, a little bit more of a defensive presence. Mm -hmm. She can score when she needs to, but I would say she's more of a, a role player type. Yeah. Um, defensive first, but it's just neat uh, them how they they support each other, but they also welcome their roles, and I think that's really neat. Right. It shows a, a level of maturity that you don't necessarily see um, in the high school level, because I know if I had a twin and they were scoring more than me and maybe, you know, getting all these accolades, I, maybe I'd be a little jealous. I might, I might be, or maybe not. I don't really know, but it's just really yeah. cool to see, to see uh, that connection between them and they definitely have Escanaba. Coming into the season, I thought Escanaba was going to be one of the better teams in uh, in the UP. And for them to go, I think what you said, it was one to, one in five early on. Right. Um, I was very, very surprised. But it definitely seems like they got things uh, going in the right direction there yeah. at Escanaba. So. And that is, uh, going off of what you were talking about, that is something that uh, Coach Hudson had mentioned, is that when you do have twins on the same team, people just assume they're going to be the same player. Um, so that is cool that they've embraced that identity as Fulfilling different goals, I guess, on the court. Right. Yeah. I went to Hannaville, or we had somebody go to Hannaville, and I, I put together a piece on the Hannaville Soaring Eagles. Right. Um, they're a team that doesn't get talked about too much. We've done a few stories on them in the past. Um, very, very interesting team. Um, they're in the Northern Lights League Conference. Uh, they're leading. It's not a conference we talk about too often. Um, a lot of small, uh, smaller schools uh, making up that conference, but they're leading their conference right now with a, I think it's a 14 and four overall record. Um, and they just had their first ever player score 1000 points. And that was Deshaun Metzger. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. He's a really, really talented player, uh, fearless on the court. The coach has talked about, he has a, uh, confidence to him, a cockiness. Uh, sometimes they wish he would tone it back a little bit, but, um, you know, he's, he's doing big things there. Um, for for the soaring eagles and uh they want to go and win a district they want to win their league tournament as well they fell uh, short last, last year after winning it two years ago they're already um, on so there's, i just like, thought it was I a really neat story uh, like, oh, whenever yeah, you can become you, the first you, player in school right. history it's just to just do anything how, right. that's really neat that is a huge accomplishment much more and uh Metzger's definitely like setting the standard stuff for this team just this and the knowledge is that a player that through obviously the underclassmen can look up to and I think uh, that program well. is definitely yep. trending um, in the right direction. And then, like I mentioned, what, you went to a signing uh, as well. Uh, you want to talk about in their three conference. Marquette, Do you know? Correct. Um, yes, sir. Three yeah, so from Marquette, two the Northern Lakes League Golf, Conference is a Abby lot Luke of uh, signing up for Southern women's Western golf. teams. And then we have Tucker okay. Welch um, and uh, Wyatt school, Lincoln in Superior Central is in that I was only at a couple Marquette games this year. I'm blanking right now. I know they definitely did stand out. Fairly large league. I saw them play Sault Ste. Marie, I believe. Something they're going to have a teammate we, we joining cover them. Yeah, I was going to say, well, I'm not super yeah, familiar with Northern, Northern Conference. Those are kind of the leagues that we talk about. Yeah. Marquette was um, super impressive. Definitely man. some super talented I mean, teams in that, that league, though, that we're back probably going to see make, make in runs out of season. So it should, sure. we weren't very excited. excited. I mean, awesome. we wanted Moving on, we talked, or I talked with the Marquette boys basketball team yesterday, actually. Eric Mason does a great job with these players. This is a team they've had an up and down season. They're one of the teams that I love to watch the most. Won their first three games, and they lost two, three games in a row. They're very effective. And then that the came ball, right as winter break was happening. Well. So but then they, they had that huge two and a half line. weeks yeah. to kind of I mean, sit yeah, back and be like, lines, like six, five, why are we losing? Six, why, seven, why are we in this like position? Offensive line. And right. they were um, able to, to turn so, things yeah, around. Uh, they're winners really of 13 like straight. Play. Uh, um, it's Thursday night as we're recording this, and they're playing as we speak. So I'm wondering if the sports zone curse doesn't actually affect them tonight. If they're going to move it to 14 straight games. But the one thing I noticed when I was at their practice is going into that that well, gym, you wouldn't not know why, that this course. team is why it's about winners to, of 13 about straight games. The way they practice, yeah. but, I mean, the seen effort they're giving, the, the intensity like in the way that's that usually kind of going of, through like, the practice. Not, it's very efficient. They have yeah. a lot of I'm really, trying to think really, really because not off the top good of my players, head, athletic think, players. I think they have like four or five guys no that were dunked in the basketball when I was there. And I was thinking back because I, I played for Marquette all the way back in 2007. And it would have been lucky if we came across like, like, what? Yeah, like one, two Wednesday, players that could dunk the basketball like in game I could be or even in practice. Don't I think take my word for just this, a couple on our team. Yeah. Including myself. On a good day, I get it right over the rim. Great I do. They've had some athletes go I don't know what's going on with kids these days, Tor. They're evolving because they have guys that can jump out of the gym. Obviously, got to shout out places like Advantage for trading these kids year-round. I mean, my goodness, these guys were 
uh, and jumping around, yeah. jumping over, so you know, dunking the ball and, yeah. and playing some really to, good, uh, need to make really a good trip, defense. And that was actually the key. That's what Coach Lee help. said. Speaking uh, of Rebecca, she coach, did a really good job with we her began wildcat weekly this week. Oh, yeah. I was defense out on the road first, and, and then similar to what Hitchman and Richardson Richardson stopped by. They turned that defense into offense. They like to push the ball. They would rather get on the fast break than get into their half-court sets. His first like full offseason at NMU, we talked about some of the They're very successful doing it. You can see that on the played Marquette a few weeks ago with Sam Larson. The Menominee's head coach said that was the most physical team. That, kids, we, that we've played this season, a lot of people and that's the way they practice. They don't call fouls the right in practice, the job, but and uh, they say let you gotta guys play. Like they play through the, the, I mean, the contract, and last, it's definitely showing uh, because Marquez is in a get a chance district. to do much right. Yeah, right. Traverse City kind of just Gaylord stuck and, with who he uh, had. Alpina, and he did. I think, is in their district. This best uh, job these are very, you know, physical teams. Gotta let him get his guys in there. Gotta especially for a team like Marquez is in a strong distance. Gotta be physical and see how they develop. Especially in the playoffs. Yeah, four or five years down They've looked great the times I've seen them. I know that Menominee gave me mention. They've gone to like an overtime in a bunch of games. Yeah. That Menominee one you'd mentioned, they went to overtime and ended up winning. That's fair. Um, so, I was there um, when I'm they excited played to see. St. Ignis uh, uh, last week. Is the and right that one, the they and looked like do the far job. better team. Um, so I loved it half time, I believe, and that one ended up going to overtime as well. I was very surprised by that, but obviously they came through with the win. We got 13 straight. Yeah, it was great. They got a bunch of super tall guys, Jacob McPhee. I think he was mentioned as number one team. That's correct. So, yeah, I think that. Yep. So, Sorry. Coach yeah, Lee actually mentioned that. He yeah. said, one through three, um, I'm still coaching them very hard because there had been games where we built the lead in the right. first half and kind of yeah. let that lead slip I remember, away. Um, yeah. Funny Ishmael you mentioned that overtime. That one. Nagani the, is a two great of, team. Two of the three games they've lost like this they season were, in, were overtime losses, including a buzzer beater against Westwood. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, Westwood. Maya Hemmer. I believe it was the tallest person on the court that day. And I think she had the game for points. They used that as fuel for their fire to turn things around. And Nagani's able to slow down. Yeah. Doing a great I job. I think Nagani uh, stacks up fairly well. Marquette plays uh, Kingsford. I think it's next just Thursday. They've already earned a share of the GNC yeah, yeah, crown. Exactly if they right. can the beat X-Factor Kingsford, or, then they can win it outright. So that's going to be a huge game. Yeah, be good. Um, Most of the games going to have to get somebody there to play. shoot that. She is Speaking of our, our game of the week, yeah. you don't really see we a have lot of teams a with a pretty good game. As you can see, Menominee goes to Kingsford. This is a rematch from a game earlier in the season. Kingsford beat Menominee, I think, by 10. I remember that the first meeting. So two teams that are kind of similar. They have the a lot of that we don't have this year. Uh, a lot of guys that can do down uh, multiple things. And Ishwamin um, does. So I, the last they're going to need to shoot lights out of this Mountain. one. I don't think it's going to be in that game. But it is. They gave Iron Mountain um, all they, game, but, they could um, handle. It's going to be uh, they a t- tough play very well. So I expect that one to be a really good game. Should be some top plays going on. Yeah, for sure. A lot of athletes playing that game. So turned out at least they turned out well. Mike Aliu, exactly. Yeah, that was great. Gavin Rondon is super good. So I think this one is going to be a really good game. Athlete happening Friday night. I think by the so time you see this, it might have already happened. Uh, to so see how that, if that one turns is the out. Case, um, outside of that, I mean, the high school we'll basketball, high school basketball season is absolutely flying also, by. It's going to be next Thursday quick. night. We're going to have like a week, week, or week and a half before um, the boys' postseason starts. And then the girls' season doesn't start too much longer after that. So it's going to be a good time. Hopefully, we can see multiple UP teams make it to the postseason. And we'll definitely get into talking about that as the playoffs begin. And super excited. So that wraps up. Our should be, sports should be super excited podcast for this week. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for clicking on. Other than that, I don't think we have too much space is so left. There's so cover. many podcasts um, that next week. Click on. Uh, so if you're, I think we one have, we might be talking about this one. Uh, Champions, What's wrong? Missing Mustangs. What's wrong? I think that just is something thank you that so we're going to be looking to do. So I'll make sure to tune in Sports Zone next Thursday night. Super Bowl predictions. We only have a few more of these to go. Yeah, let's do Super Bowl predictions. I'll go really quick. I'm not ever going to. I don't know if you have anything else to add. Kansas City Chiefs sign off. Yeah, I've seen a lot of good teams. Yeah, so I think we got to. Chance I feel with the, the same playoffs way coming about up. The Chiefs. Um, but yeah, hopefully um, we can get uh, as many as possible, especially going downstate, right? Exactly. Yeah. We'll see you guys next Thursday, or we'll see you next Thursday on the Sports Zone. We'll see you here um, in the Sports Zone OT when, when this gets up online as well. So again, we appreciate you guys tuning in, whether it be live on TV or here on our podcast. Uh, this, your support does mean a lot to us, and uh, we're just happy that people are actually tuning in and watching. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks.